Good evening, it's Jeremy here and I'm going to show you how to do a Area 51 logo in Illustrator today and I'm going to walk you through this tutorial. You can see I created this cool logo and you can use it as a sticker or whatever you want and I like the bold colors, bold type and very simple but got a sci-fi vibe and I've been seeing videos on YouTube on how people are doing the Area 51 raid so I thought it was funny and just like thought I'm like why does, might as well just do a logo so I'm going to show you how to do it and you can see some different variations here that I created. I thought it was super cool, it turned out nicely how I wanted it. And yeah, looking fresh. So first up, what we're gonna do, just go to Google and type in UFO and just pick any picture that has like a nice side view. And you can see, I'm not gonna copy it directly, but I'm just gonna use this shape. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drag this down here. And you can see I've changed the transparency. So if I go to my transparency panel, it's on 50%. So you can see it's lighter. And I've just got a few fonts here on the left that uh, I'll end up picking. But you can use free fonts, it's totally fine. So what I'm going to do with this UFO, I'm just going to create an ellipse or a circle. So if I go to the left hand side, the toolbar, you'll see this ellipse tool. I'm going to left click on that. And I'm going to click and drag and hold Alt. If you're on a Mac, it will be Command. And you can see I'm just going to drag it to the similar shape. And let go of my mouse. And you can see you got the shape. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to hold Alt, left click on this circle and bring it up. And hold Shift to keep it straight. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to scale it down. So I'll go to the corner of the bounding box. And then holding Shift and Alt and scaling it down like this. And clicking and dragging at the same time. And then I'm just going to left click, drag this up a little bit. And I'm going to get the side of the bounding box, hold Alt. And I'm going to drag it in a bit because it's too wide. So bring that up like that. I'll bring this up as well. And then I'm going to press A for the direct selection tool. As you can see on the left, I'll select this little point and just bump it up a little bit with my up arrow, as you can see there. And we get this nice spherical round shape, which is super cool. And that's pretty much it for the UFO. So I'm going to move this across and I'm going to keep this as black. So you can see I went and picked some fonts. So I just went through my font selection and I filtered and selected sans serif fonts. And I went through here and I was looking for bold fonts. So you can see I got a few here. I got Amphibia, I got Connect, New, Instalung, and Urban Black. Um, some of these are from th Typekit, but you know you can use other free fonts. Try and find like a sci-fi one that's got a bit of a unique shape with the with the number or the letter or whatever and you can play around with that. So I decided to go for Amphibi on this one. If you don't have this, pick a free font, that's totally fine. You can pick any one. And yeah, this one I picked Black Expanded. You can see it's a pretty extensive font, but I kind of like the shape of the 51 here and it's really bold and interesting. So I picked this one. So I'm gonna duplicate it, bring it in here. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna play around with the size, maybe scale it up. And then I'm going to select this, scale it down, and I'm going to duplicate it. So in case you make a mistake, we can always go back and edit the original logo that we're designing. So first up, as you can see, we have the font here. I'm going to just straighten it up. So if I select two of them and then I click once and pick the align tool, you can see I'm align aligning it to the center. So it's centered now. And I'm just moving it around and seeing, you know, where it looks like. And I'm going to change the color. So... If I go select a lighter gray color, bring it to the front, you can go object arrange. And if something is behind, if the object is behind or the typography is behind an object, you can just go to object arrange at the top and go bring to front or bring forward and it should bring it to the front. As you can see here, it's overlapping on the top now. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just make a another duplicate. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plus these two shapes together. So I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool. If you don't have it up, you can go Window Pathfinder. And then what I'm going to do, I'll press this first one, which is Unite. It's going to plus the shapes together. I'm going to click on my typography. I'm going to go Type and go Create Outlines. This will make the typography or the font into shapes. So you can see now if I select it, it's all shapes now. And so what I want to do, I want to customize the font here. I don't want it to just be the same. So 
First things first, I'll come here to the E. I'm gonna press M, so the letter M for the box tool or the rectangle tool, as you can see. I'll just make it a little bit lighter so you can see. And I'm gonna drag it here next to the crossbar here on the E. And you can see I'm going to make sure that it's aligning as much as possible. And I'm gonna duplicate this and bring this one down the bottom. And I'm gonna make sure that it fills this whole square space here, as you can see. And try and make sure it aligns like almost 100% if you can. And if you go to view, you can click your smart guides on. If you're using a grid, you can use that, but I'm not doing a grid, I'm just doing snap the point. And what I can do now, select these two squares or rectangles that we just made, and I'll hold shift and also select the E. And then what I'm going to do is press shift M, and then it's gonna select the shape builder tool for me. And if I hold alt or option on your Mac, I can left click and drag and minus those shapes out. So now we have a custom E here, as you can see, which is super cool. And you can see if I zoom really in, you can see how it's a bit messed up here. That's okay, I can just go in. If I just, un if I just lock the alien UFO there, and if I go select these points, so I can select this point and just drag it down like that. I can drag this corner down as well. Holding shift so it's straight. So it just keeps it all straight there. Which is totally fine. I'll do the same for the one. So press M, make a box. I'll try and, what I want to do is make it consistent with this spacing here. So for example, so you can see it's a bit one. So if I, I can either match the same width for consistency or I can just leave it a bit bigger if I want. Which is totally fine. We're not going for accuracy here. We're just going, doing the best we can. So same thing, select it and then shape build it with a shift M, hold and then alt and then minus it off. Super cool. So now we've got some custom type. I'll do the same to the A's. So the A's, I press P for the pen tool. It's also located on the left hand side, as you can see here at the top. I'll left click, left click, left click, left click, boom, like this. Select it all, hold shift M, minus and cut that off like that. And now we have a custom A. So I love editing fonts all the time. Like that's what I always do because you don't want to just make it bland and boring. You want to make it reflect the vibe you're going for. You know what I mean? So what we're going to do now, we've got our basic shape here, as you can see, but we have to get this type of shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually start using the pathfinder tool and the offset path as well. So I'll select this, duplicate it again, bring it down here. I'm going to select this and hold shift and select the spaceship as well. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to object, path, offset path. I'll press preview so I can see what it's gonna do. It's pretty much gonna duplicate the path and then expand it out from its original point. So I can bump it up, make it really thick or I can make it like really just small outline, but I like going a bit thick, so five points is good. I press OK. And you can see now it's got all these extra shapes. So what I want to do is press the Pathfinder and click Unite. So I've done that, and you can see if I drag it out, you can see all the original shapes are there. So this is the duplicate. It's also in a group, so you've got to be careful. See how it's automatically grouped? So what I'm going to do is click it and press Control shift g Or alternatively, go to Object on the top corner, and you can click ungroup as you can see here. That works as well. And so now you can see these are not grouped, which is cool. So I'll bring that to the back. You can go object, arrange, and bring to the back. And all the shortcuts are there. So I encourage you, use the shortcuts as much as you can because it will save you time. And I'm just going to bring up in my color panel, you can see I'm just bringing up the black. So you can see, just make it lighter just for now, but we're gonna color it later. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this over here. So I'm constantly duplicating, so if I make a mistake, I can always go back. So awesome, this is looking cool. So what I'm gonna do is start to adjust this bottom bar here. I don't like how you can see how it's going to the grooves of the letters, 
if you like that, you can keep it, but if you don't like it, we're gonna edit it. So I'm gonna select my bottom shape here, double click on it, and I'm just gonna go into isolation mode. This allows me just to purely focus on this shape. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna press A for the direct selection tool and then select the bottom points and press delete to make it straight. I'll also delete all these points as well. Press delete, delete. And then if I select these two anchor points or just select the shape, I'll press control J and it should make a line across here and join these two anchors, which it did. So now for exit out of it, you can see there, it's looking super cool and that's looking really good. So awesome. So now what we're gonna do now is add these like little highlight things, which is pretty cool. And before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly duplicate this again so we can have a stroke as an outline. So I press the bottom object, go to object path, offset path, press preview, and we'll make this one a bit smaller. So we'll put it on two points is fine and press okay. I'll just make that a bit lighter or darker as you can see. So we're starting to get these outlines. And the reason why I'm working in grayscale is so we can focus on the design and how it looks instead of focusing on colors right now. So that's looking really cool, really sweet. Now, what I am gonna do for this bit is I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna go object path, offset path once again, press preview. And I'm gonna go minus this time instead of over. So if I go minus, you can see it sticks with the outline of the actual UFO, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go minus five and press, actually I'll go minus six and press okay. Now I'm gonna double click on this outline so I can go into isolation mode again. And you can see here, I'm gonna press Shift X to change the fill from the stroke. And now it's a stroke. And now what I'm gonna do is delete the parts that I don't want. So I don't want this bottom bit. I don't want this, so I'm just slowly deleting this. I don't want these here. So you can see because we use Pathfinder at the start and you can see these two shapes, originally you'll do offset path with this and offset path with this. But if you did plus them together, what you can do is you can actually just make the stroke yourself as well. So you can see this is the, so if I just change the color there. So we can leave it like that, that's totally cool. Or I can use my pen tool and come and click and drag to finish that path off. So you can see we had a half path and I left clicked on this anchor point and clicked and dragged. And then now we have this nice curve there, which is totally cool because it goes with the shape of the UFO and I can always adjust it and stuff as well. So now what I want to do is press shift, select the stroke that I want, press shift W on the keyboard and you'll see this is the width tool. On the left hand side, you can see it's this funny little jester hat shape. And I'm gonna make one point in the middle, drag it out and then go to the ends and drag them in to taper the ends off like that. Make sure it's not too thick. You wanna make it an even sort of medium width. And I'll do the same for the bottom bit here as well. Make sure you do it in the medium part. You do one point in the middle or else it's not gonna work properly. So you can see that, that is looking fresh, looking super cool. I'm just gonna duplicate it. And now you can see it's starting to take shape. You can see I added another um, element here, just so it sort of fits within that nested shape, as you can see, because without it, it sort of sits weirdly. So what you can do for that is what we did before. So I'm gonna group these letters together by holding shift. I'll select them all and press control G to group them. Go to object, path, offset path once again. And we'll go to plus and we don't want it too much. But you can do two points. I'll go to my pathfinder tool on the right here and press the first button, which is unite them, which mashes it all together. And I'll double click on it just so I can edit these little spaces here. So I'll use Shift M, the Shape Builder tool, and just left click and drag to plus those shapes, as you can see that, that's pretty cool. And I'll make it the same color as the background, so make sure that it's that you select the right one. And you can see it's grouped funny, so to ungroup, I'll go Object, Ungroup, 
and just do it again. Okay, and now it's ungrouped. And then I'll just hold shift and group these two together, as you can see that. And I'll bring it to the back using the shortcut key, control shift, left square bracket. And now it's connected. But you can see we have another issue here. They've got, we've got some weird spacing here. And this is a common problem when you're doing these type of logos with negative space and, and overlays and stuff. You can see that it just looks funny. It looks out of place, right? And it, especially if you scale it down, the details don't get retained there, which is weird. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold shift, select this shape, select the UFO, and then I'll use the shape builder tool and plus these bits together like that. You can also come in here and edit this shape if you want. So I'll double click and like if you want it to just make it like really like that. Simple. I can even do it with this one if I want and delete this. But it's up to you like how you want the look and feel. It just depends how you want it. So that doesn't look too bad. And cool, I'll just make another duplicate. And now we're we are all good to color. So I'll duplicate this, bring it over here and I'll start to color it. I'm going to go here and get the color that I want for the background. And you can see I got a color palette from Adobe color. You can see I like these greens, a bit of neon is okay. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to go here and start coloring. So this is a stroke still. So if I were to make a stick out of this, it's okay to expand it. So I'll go object, expand appearance, and it will make these strokes into shapes, which just makes it easy when you're printing it off and stuff like that. Make that green, make this green, make the outline, click and make that white. I can make these green or white. And you never just want to use normal black because it's not a nice color. And you can see I'll select this color, but you can see it's the same as the background. So I'll select it. I'll go to color in the top right. And you can see I've got, it's on hue, saturation and brightness or black. Um, but what you can do is you can change it to RGB or CMYK, whatever you're using and play around with that. But I like to use HSB and just play around with these tones and make it darker, as you can see there. To get that contrast, you want a nice contrast, as you can see. And now, as you can see, if I compare it, you can see this one, my first original one is a bit different, but same sort of vibe as you see. So if I just change the colors, just so it's all the same. And this one should be that color. And there we go. Now it's the same. It's just a bit lower, which is totally fine. But yeah, that's how we that's how you do your Area 51 logo. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I had fun doing this one. This is pretty cool. I love experimenting, just playing around. But yeah, hit that subscribe button and also leave a like and a comment. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next tutorial.